So here I am at the mulch pile. Uh, I think uh, from my uh, carbon and nitrogen uh, game uh, or card game, I believe the uh, the wood chips are around 550 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. And in the compost pile, you're looking for somewhere around the 20 to 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. And uh, basically, uh, uh, greens and browns in, uh, in the correct proportion. Um, and, uh, and you have a compost pile. If you add large chunks of wood chips uh, to your compost, then the advantage of that is, of course, airflow. The uh, disadvantage is that just something you have to sift out because it's not going to decompose at the same rate that you're hoping for for your compost. So whether you sift it at the front end or the back end, I mean, most of the time uh, having backyard uh, garden uh, desires, I'm sifting it on both ends. But uh, I've got my, uh, my wheelbarrow set up with my 3 8 inch screen and I'm taking it down, taking the particle size down to uh, 3 8 Normally I wouldn't put in wood chips just because of the nature of them. If they've been really well aged, then they're going to go fine through the compost. But in this case, I'm a little bit low on my, uh, on my ground up oak leaves and, uh, and I want to make the, the uh, pile a little bit taller. So I'm going ahead with the, uh, with the sifting process. So uh, this is the, uh, the one of the, my preferred fork for mulch. It's nice lightweight plastic. You can run your car over it. It doesn't hurt it. Seems to be relatively UV impervious. There's a long handle one version also, but uh, I just enjoy it, and I'm trying to show you the uh, the, the uh, tools that uh, that I enjoy working with to make uh, the process easier. So, once again, we're talking about the sifting process. Most people, you can see that they're the center heat. Perhaps the uh, monitor is showing you the the uh, steam coming up off of the pile. So it's uh, it's, it's rather warm, Not uh, you can leave your arm in it when you get the compost pile up and running. You won't leave your hand in it very long and gets that much heat. So it's working as a, in a composting process, just sitting here, this mulch pile. But uh, once again, uh, the sifting method takes it down to a finer material that's gonna break down quicker. Certainly I keep thinking of everything as, uh, can, is, it big, is it too big for the, for, the, uh, for the worm to take a bite in this case worms that I found in the pile will be leaving shortly when I compost it because it's going to get real warm for them. So the uh, normal everyday uh, process that I see being repeated is what your mama taught you about kneading bread. So the kneading bread is back and forth. It's, it's effective but not as effective as in the massage business we call this petrissage where the hand goes over. It's a, uh, it's a little bit awkward to learn in the front end. But once you have it, it uh, speeds you up to about uh, twice as fast as the uh, kneading bread method. So, uh, effleurage or petrissage, either way, uh, learn petrissage. It takes a little bit of coordination. It also helps to move you into a right hand, left hand person instead of strictly right hand. You'll also notice from my uh, minor in in uh, introduction into a keto that I'm dropping into my in my knees. My knees are bent, my legs are up and rested up against the wheelbarrow. That also enhances my force and longer stamina as opposed to this, which fatigues right at the belt line, L4, L5. Anybody you talk to that has a back problem, it's always L4, L5. It's a shift of the uh, vertebrae from load bearing, large load bearing, to uh, flexibility. So it's a, uh, it's a great design but not humped over like this all the time, forcing all the weight to be, all the muscles to be engaged. So drop down into your knees. It's called lowering your key in the keto or martial arts. So I'm brushed up against the wheelbarrow. I'm leaning against it. I drop down. I'm not bending over very far. I'm six foot three. And uh, so uh, it's even more important to, uh, for that. wasn't for the video, I can assure you this 
little goofy hat that I'm wearing would be around my mouth. Uh, I'm creating quite a bit of dust, and while I'm sitting here working, I'm inhaling that dust, and a little bit I think is probably okay. When you're doing this a lot, you should cover up. That's how that works. It's pretty efficient. Real cheaper than buying yourself a trommel. You'll see that I bend my end this way before I put it on. And then do the same thing on this end. Sort of a, just a bend. And this becomes my door. So I can scoop things off like that or just shovel it off like that. Very effective. Will last a considerable amount of time. So here's what you end up with. nice, soft, much smaller particles you can see from uh, the old original. So I've taken out everything that was smaller than 3 eighths of an inch. Now I got something that's going to uh, be very effective in the compost pile and uh, make things happen quicker and uh, more complete.